in order to achieve integration, what is the process by which we go there? One uh, approach is what I would call laissez-faire integration, and this is the American approach where immigrants have to figure it out by themselves. Another approach, which I think is quite common in Europe, is what I would call top-down integration, where the government and public officials are telling immigrants what to do, sometimes coercively in that they have to pass particular tests or they have to take mandatory classes. The Canadian approach has been largely one of what I would call public-private partnerships. And this is a model that I think has served Canada quite well. So let me just explain a little bit about the differences. So in the United States, there is no integration policy at the federal level. There is no program. There is no money given for something called immigrant integration. So what that means is that immigrants have to figure out how to do integration by themselves and that communities, states or municipalities, might have their own programs, but there's a patchwork of different policies and different ways of doing this across the country. In the European context, some countries have instituted mandatory language classes and they require that immigrants go to them and even get civic training. And if they don't, they might be prevented from citizenship or in some cases they might even um, have their permanent residency taken away or put into um, sort of a temporary status as they have to prove that they have properly integrated. One of the problems, I think, with this top-down approach is that it really communicates that immigrants have a problem or are a problem, and they're the ones who have to be doing the integrating. There's no responsibility on the other side except for these government officials who tell the immigrants what to do. And often, unfortunately, the people who head these initiatives don't reflect the communities that they're interacting with. So very often, uh, these classes or the officials are not themselves from immigrant communities, which sort of increases the sense of paternalism or um, you know, that there's something wrong with the immigrants and they have to be shown the proper pathway. In the Canadian case, there is money given by the federal government, the provincial government, and sometimes municipal governments, and some of this money will go to community-based organizations. So they're given a grant or some kind of contract to give services. Some of these community-based organizations are run and staffed by immigrants. And what happens then is that you can have more appropriate bilingual and bicultural services for the immigrants who use them, but again, it also communicates a message. So policies are never just uh, the process or the, the things that are on the book. They also have symbolic meaning. And in this case, when you have these public-private partnerships, you're saying that you trust immigrants enough that they can organize themselves and that they can do these goals of integration. Uh, and then they can uh, uh, modify or adjust it as necessary for the community. Now, this doesn't mean that there's no problems. There can be problems. Sometimes the programs or the services um, aren't very effective. Uh, sometimes people wonder if there aren't other ways to do these things. But what does happen is that you have communication between government agencies and government officials and the people on the ground. So, one of the reasons that Canada, I think, has been successful is because of these public-private partner, public partnerships. Public-private partnerships.